All right, this is going to be a look at one play from the Ravens' win over the Steelers. A spread concept, an RPO out of trips. Well, becomes trips. Originally, it's pro twins. So Duve motioning to it. I love the play for a lot of reasons. It gives us a run option to one side. It gives us a pass option to the downside of your screen here, the left side of the offense. You can see that Dobbins is crossing Huntley's face. You've got a run read, and I think his original read is this outside linebacker, Highsmith, who's going to go with Dobbins. You'll see that he actually tackles Dobbins right here. He's got his arms wrapped around Dobbins. And then we've got three routes to the downside of the field. I'll tell you, a team who has struggled with RPOs historically, or at least in the last year and a half, against us and against the rest of the league, the Cleveland Browns. You may see RPOs more against the Browns than we have here recently. So usually when we run the RPO, you're getting one flat route and then one snag route. But it's th this receiver's not normally here. Okay, you normally got two guys up here, tight end wing. And then you're getting a snag from a tightly aligned X. And so it's just snag flat. <clears throat> In this case, we've got twins, and we're running the curl or the stop with Deshaun Jackson. And then do out into the flats, you know, some type of clear out here. Similar to what we run out of the pistol RPO to our right. You may remember the failed long pass down the right sideline to um, Tyler Wallace from Lamar, I think against the Bengals on a fourth and one. And we've run that a couple of times this year. Deshaun Jackson had a catch along that right sideline, a big catch, 23, 22-yard gain against the Saints that got called back for Morgan Moses being downfield. Let's look at the end zone angle real quick. So we're leaving Highsmith unblocked, pulling powers. And Stanley lets you know it's a true RPO because he kept it when, when there's pulling linemen. You're not going to – this isn't going to be your pass pro scheme. <laughs> you know what I mean? Normally. So it's a quick decision by Huntley. Highsmith is going with the back. JK, you guys already saw that from the All-22. Keeps it. Now, here's the thing against the Browns. Last year, twice at home, Lamar runs through the RPO progression and takes off around the edge. Because there's there's guys committed or assigned, you know, to the run. So they're flowing here. And then you have the pass concepts out here off screen to our right. The offense is left. Lamar twice against the Browns last year kept it for big gains. I'm interested to see what our plan of attack is against the Browns. They did a great job defending our run game, I thought, in our win in Baltimore earlier. Same play here from the L22. I just I love the RPOs. I, I hated them as a defensive coordinator. I hated them. Because, you know, there's linemen downfield. There's got, I mean, go, look, guys, they could call this. It's in the gray area, but they could call this. All right. It happens on damn near every RPO for almost every team. It's okay if Josh Oliver does it. It's not okay. When, I'm, when I say Oliver, I mean, there's Oliver up there at the tight end. It's not okay if Ben Cleveland does it or Morgan Moses. It's going to get called. It will get called some. So what's the, what's the reward? Is there, is there a reward? One thing I would say about it is I feel like there has to be a play to go up top. You're going to get safeties sitting, meaning you're going to get safeties who are trying to figure out what's happening and not turning and going. Yeah, I mean, Fitzpatrick is, is backpedaling, don't get me wrong. He's a tactical, technical guy, but he's not turning and going. There has to be an element at some point where DJX or Robinson, we get them on a vertical late because there's going to be space. There's going to be space here. There's going to be time. The only guy who's going to be capable of getting any pressure at all, if the quarterback keeps it, is going to be the inside linebacker to that side. That's the only guy. Now, then again, it's, it's got to be a quick hitter because you don't want to get linemen called downfield. So maybe we have to call it at certain times if we know what the edge player is doing and, and call it, meaning called, keep it. Linemen don't get downfield, just down block like a pass pro scheme and just trust that the edge defender is going to um, you know, run with the running back. It's a great play concept because you have one threat up here to the top side. You have you know, a second threat out here into the flats to the far side, the other side of the field, and then the snag. I love this play. I love the RPOs that we run. I wish we ran them more. I wish we were a little more creative with them. You guys let me know if you agree or disagree. RPO seems like a, a, a concept that teams at every level are using, even down into the youth levels, to give quarterbacks quick reads and force horizontal conflict in defenses. So you have cross flow, Duve going to our left, the downside of the screen, Dobbins going to the top side, and then potentially Huntley also could scramble out to the edge. 
It's a unique concept, really stresses the defense when they're um, not in man. And, and when they are in man, then it simply becomes probably a run, play, a give. Let me know what you guys think of, of this video and um, the RPO concept in general. Could we use it more against the Browns? Could it be the, the way that we try to supplement the pass game if Anthony Brown has to go, if he has to be the guy, giving him some easy decisions, some quick decisions to try to get the ball out and get the ball to some other playmakers out in a little bit of space. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of the RPO. Uh, which you, if I missed any RPOs, I didn't see us run any other. Maybe we ran one other one against the Steelers, but I don't remember it, to be honest with you. I would love to see us invert this and use Robinson as the snag guy and, and Deshaun Jackson going up top and then force the defense to um, have to defend the verticality of the field. I would even like to – I didn't mean to do this, so my apologies. From this alignment, I would even like to see something like this from DJX and, and force you know this guy to decide. What's he going to do? Is he going to support with the run? Like he does here, you can see that the entire side of the field up here is cleared out for Deshaun Jackson. You know, But again, you, you'd you have to worry about linemen getting downfield and that route taking longer to develop. It would have to be something that you run early in the game and then you come back to it later on because you know what their response is going to be. Forgive me for that last little addition or digression there. Thank you guys for your time. If you enjoy the video, please let me know in the comment section. I want to try to do more Ravens offensive concept videos to explain things, what I know of them, and then you guys in the comment section can let me know what you think of them and then also let me know if you think I've missed any elements or aspects to the play. Appreciate you guys' time.